Welcome back everybody. Uh, I've got a cool tutorial for you today, or not really a tutorial, eh, maybe a little bit. Uh, it's showing you some of the new aspects to the Greeble generator in the Greeble Pack Pro. Um, it's uh, the part of the 1.5 update, and I want to show you how to generate customized Greebles with a lot more precision that you would with the previous generator. Uh, a little more hand tooling that you have to mess with, but I think I've made it as simple as I could for you. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. As you can see in front of you, this was a totally customized Greeble. It didn't use really much of the randomness of the generator itself, but it did take uh, into account the tiling, the, four, uh, the 4K texture tiling as well as the new 3D uh, output so these models this uh, panel here is actually tileable so one side will match the other side so it it will perfectly uh, go to go onto a grid together you know so you can make a hallway or whatever you know whatever your heart's content there it's uh, imagination's up to you I'll show you a couple of the textures there this is the the ambient occlusion that it generated, uh, as well as the shaded version here uh, that basically helped create this guy here. This is, uh, and the the macros inside 1.5 will actually generate a 3D object for you. But that's, we're not really focused on the 3D part of it. We're just focused on how to customize and make the Greeble generator your own. So we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take some brushes that are inside ZBrush already. We're gonna use the new Greeble brush that I designed specifically for the generator, and also at the end of it, I will show you how to create a rock texture using the Greeble generator. We don't have to stick with sci-fi stuff. We don't even have to have Greebles. Okay, it can still we can still take advantage of the 4K tiling that is created. And this was relatively simple. Uh, you could download the the rock brush that I use that I will be using in it. Uh, it's on my Gumroad page. It's free, and you can see it did a really great job there. You know driving it just from uh, some textures and creating this uh, 3D model from it, minus the little bit of edging, a little jaggedness of the edging in there, it really does a great job. And you could just barely make out a seam. I mean, that's pretty cool to make uh, tileable 3D models. In my opinion, I think that's pretty cool. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into ZBrush. And I wanted to get started to show you how you can add to the Greeble brush and add your own uh, IMM brushes or you know you can download them there's a lot of them out there some are paid some are free so it just depends on what you want so go ahead we're gonna load up uh, polymesh real quick we're gonna drag him out and let me change his color and T for edit there we go now he's now he's easier to see all right so go ahead to do B and we're looking for we're going to look at the new IMM brush that they created it's uh, the boolean and we're going to go ahead and make a brush or make a make a couple more parts to add to the Greeble brush and then we'll start working in the generator so let's see here's the parts that I want to make here I got this uh, the power detail here, if you hit M on your keyboard, you can see all of them here is the power detail right there. You can uh, change that mesh right there. If you want to do W and then click it, you can actually create it that way. You know, and then you can do subtool duplicate. And then you can do, let's go ahead and, oops, oh, it clicked off it. Okay. It's on transpose now. If you do Q and then hit W again, we can go ahead and do M. Oh, where does it keep on going? Okay, Q. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. All right, so go ahead, W. We just need to click on the one that we want. So I want this oval right here, or that's what it's called anyways. 
All right, turn off solo, frame everybody up. And we can go ahead and hit Q. We'll just go back to a standard brush here. And if you guys are interested in the UI, if you guys are new to my channel, that is available on my Gumroad page. It is, uh, it should look exactly like this as long as you're working with uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution. You can grab that for free. So let's go ahead and do some deformations real fast. I want to unify this mesh and we'll zoom him out and repeat the other. There we go. This way it gets it to a one-to-one -one scale and everybody's centered where I want them at. And the reason I want to, uh, I basically want to modify these just a little bit. So I'm going to solo him. And as you can see, they're a little fauceted, so a little jagged. We don't want that when we uh, draw these out. So we're going to go ahead and go to geometry. We're going to go to dynamic and dynamic. Or you can hit, or we'll do shift D and you hit D again, and that will activate uh, dynamic subdivision. Uh, or you could just do a regular divide. It don't matter because we're just going to crank it up. I just like to preview it first to see how it's going to look. Looks good there. We'll apply it. So now we got a nice smooth mesh there. Okay, so, but we don't want the polys to be so heavy. So let's go ahead, go to your Z plugins. Uh, we're going into Decimation Master. Go ahead, pre process current. Since we're not holding on to UVs or poly paint, takes no time at all. We're going to drag him. We're going to probably go down to 10,000 polygons and decimate current. And it doesn't look like much has happened to it. But if we do polyfill, we'll see that it's uh, done quite a bit for it. So what I want to do is one more thing here. I want to set up some poly groups here and go group by normals. There we go. This way it kind of isolates some areas there for us. And if you turn off the line right there, you can see it kind of breaks things up for us, which is what we want. And then I want to go under geometry, modify. We want to do delete by symmetry, turn off X, turn on Z and delete. There we go. Actually control Z first. Let's do W and I'm gonna squish him in just a little bit so he doesn't protrude out so far. So something like that. And now we can do just Q back into regular draw mode there and do that delete by symmetry. There we go. And that also reduced some of the poly counts there. So now we've got this guy here. I can't remember what he was called, so we'll just rename him Gizmo. And we're gonna go ahead and do split, group split. And not easy to see everything because we don't have double turned on. Let me just turn that on so we can see him. And if you go down to merge, we're going to merge down with weld and UV turned off, merge down until we put him all back together. And I'll show you why we're doing that here in just a second. Okay. So now we got separated polygroups and everything is split apart. So basically we'll be able to draw or uh, we could paint on him by masking our polygroup so watch this let's go to color fill object we're gonna just pick a, a gray medium gray all right if you hit fill object it'll turn on poly paint for you and go ahead and now we're gonna select a darker color go to standard your standard brush there and turn off Z add, make sure RGB is turned on. And if you go under your brush settings, modifiers, nope, not modifiers, auto masking, mask by polygroup. And I have it actually up here as well on my UI. And I'm gonna increase the draw size just a little bit there. So now I should be able to just paint onto my particular parts. Now, as you can see, I'm having a tough time getting it so works all right in some cases but if you uh whenever you decimate something you uh, it reduces the poly count tremendously so let me turn the lines back on i mean luckily we ended up with some uh 
points in the middle of it. But if you run into that problem where you don't have any points, just go into your Z modeler real quick and find a, a poly. Make sure it's selected a poly. Right click it and change that to just a split. And then if you click it, it'll split that polygon real fast. So click, we'll click, and we'll click one more so we have another point there. Maybe click a couple over here, on here. This is basically how I produce some of the brushes inside the Greeble brush. So this way it's easier to paint on. So let me turn off polyfill now. Now let me find, let me, uh, find a brighter color here and maybe oh, turn on standard and see now boom I can I can now select these points around here and brush it quite easily okay so let's go up to this poly mesh here we're gonna zoom out we're gonna go ahead and do D for dynamic I'm gonna change the subdivisions up looks good apply Z plugin Where'd he go? There he is. And pre-process. Okay, that's done. We're gonna do, we're gonna go up to about 15 for starters to see how it looks. These rounded ones sometimes take a little bit more, decimate current. See, we get a little bit of an error right there. So I'm gonna just pump them up to 25, just uh, for the sake of the tutorial's time here. So, okay, we're good. We can go ahead and probably squish them down just a little bit. And go ahead and we're going to delete that symmetry again. I'm just going to use my UI here real fast. Delete symmetry. Boom. Done. Okay. Rename him uh, Ring. It don't matter. But it'll hold on to the naming conventions there. So let's go ahead and load up our Greeble brush. So open up your brush. Load brush. And quick access, Greeple brush. Give it a sec to load. All right. So now all you have to do is just make sure you're looking at it dead on. Because you, want, you don't want to be off angle or it's going to capture it off angle. And we don't want that. We want it straight on there. So go ahead and do from mesh. And if we drag all the way over, there it is. It captured it. So now let's go down to the gizmo here. And go ahead from mesh. And the cool thing about this, it actually will uh, take the polypaint data with it, which is kind of cool. I did not know it did that until now. That's kind of cool. So we're going to do, I'm just going to save as real fast. Uh, we'll just... Uh, keep that group of brush one save and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna load up uh, the generator real fast and then we're gonna jump into that and we're gonna start uh, customizing all right we've got the Greeble generator loaded up and this is the version we're using the 4k color 1.5 4r8 so let's go ahead and hit Let's see, in, and we want to go to Greeble Single. We'll click that, and we're going to go ahead and if you drag up your subtools there, you can see everything there. If you do a shift click, let me see. If you do shift click again, everything turns off, and then click just the eyeball there. So now just the Greeble single is the one that we're going to be seeing. So as you can see, everything else turned off. So go under your nano mesh here and we're going to start designing this. So we've got the two, the two new ones here. So let me hit in real hit or let me open up subtool real fast. We got the Greeble single, Greeble multi. Greeble single will do a perfect 4K tile on on here. So whatever you draw right here will be here. Whatever you draw here will be here. Whatever you draw over here will be up here with uh, some modifications that we can make with uh, the nanomesh settings. Okay, 
Now the Greeble Multi is set up a lot like all these tech panels and miscellaneous and some of these other ones up here, the pipes, the conduit, the hexes, the plates, the panels, all of them are set up to be more random and that's what this Greeble Multi is. So as you can see in the little preview there, they're kind of all scattered here and there. Let me hit solo here so you can see them. You can see they're all scattered about, got different color variations, and that's what the Griebel Multi is. The Griebel Single is set up to be a perfect 4K tile right here, so this way, wherever you draw it out, that's where it's going to be when you're done. So, but it's, you can't draw directly onto here right now. What you have to do is go into the Nano Mesh, and as you can see, there's a uh, 20 indexes of in here that you can play with okay and they're all blank slates they're all just for you you get to create your own stuff right here so if you want before you ever get started you can always go to sub tool and you could duplicate this and you can say okay this one's gonna be a rock one and you can rename it Greeble rock or Greeble you know generator you know, make, making little generators or whatever, or fan blades or whatever. It, it's so whatever your to your heart's content there. So this way, you always have a backup of the these that you can keep on making. Just uh, remember to never uh, get the sub tools above twenty, okay? Because the the macros won't uh, won't work like they're supposed to if it goes beyond twenty sub tools. So Right now, of course, it's kind of hard to see. Let me turn it. We've got 14 sub tools, so you can you can make another six sub tools in here, and everything would work just fine. So just remember that when you're doing it. So back to our nano mesh here. So like I said, you've got 20 indexes in here to play with. We'll just go to zero, and we're going to go ahead and click Edit Mesh. And if you turn Polyfill on. And we're going to go ahead and do AA half just so we can, uh, so ZBrush doesn't have to draw so much. We're going to go ahead and frame. And the nice thing about when you're editing a mesh and you're, uh, it has a different uh, camera capture. So the, it, if we come out of edit mesh, it's already zoomed back in. It's already back to where it was. So if I hit edit mesh, it, it remembers where we were, which is kind of cool. So here's your starter panel, okay? Just use this to help you draw things out. So let me zoom out just a hair. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to town here real fast. So let's go ahead and do, let's look for our brush here. Let's see if it's still loaded in here. Yep, group of brush one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do... M here to select some. So I'm going to just start with the tech panels here. And let's see, let me scroll over. Where they at? Way over here, way over here. Actually, let's go ahead and drop our ring first. Okay, so we'll just start dead center here. We're going to draw him out. If you hold down shift, it'll constrain it. Okay, perfect. So basically, this should technically be dead center when we uh, come out of edit mesh because it's dead center on this plate. So go ahead and let's go back. Back. Okay. So now we can draw this one out. And I'm going to draw him over here. Hold down shift to constrain it. Grab the next one. Drag first, then shift. Grab the next one. See, and I'm just using that, just using that back plate to help me draw on, and it'll keep us nice and flat. You know, we're not coming out at weird angles. So, let's keep on going here. Let's grab the next one. Next one. All 
Well, that one came out goofy. Said W. I don't know why that happened. I'm going to turn him around. Scale him down. Not sure why that happened. That's weird. You can also do this another way. You can actually do, if you hold down control and then drag in a direction, it'll copy and paste. And then you just click this and it'll make a new one there for you. So if you do control, drag, and then click him, control, drag. We'll go back, we'll start over again. Control, drag, make another one. Control, drag, make another one. Cool. Okay, so now you're probably asking yourself, why aren't you staying in the grid? Well, that's the cool thing about this. Everything that I draw past this edge over here will actually come over onto this side. So if I go ahead, I'm going to clear the mask and I'm going to come out of edit mesh and we're going to take a quick look at it. I'm going to zoom back out, take a look at it. As you can see, it has tiled to the other side. So now I can go back in there and modify a bit. As you, as you can tell, it's a little heavy on one side as opposed to the other. And so we'll go back to edit mesh and a half so what i want to do is maybe draw some so i'll come in here pick the next one drag him out okay so hit w let's go ahead and control just do that little trick again control Control. All right, so let's clear a mask. Go back to draw, edit mesh, come back out. See how this looks. Zoom out. So I need to put it a little bit down here. Edit mesh. It's kind of a iterative process that you have to go through here, but it's not that bad. It's really, it's relatively painless. All right, so W, we're gonna control and drag. I kind of like this method. I may shrink him down just a little bit. Bring him down. Okay. Control and drag. And there we go. So clear a mask, edit mesh, come out, zoom. Very cool. So we've created this super duper fast. So let's go back in and add some more details here. So let's see here. Why don't we maybe add some piping in here? So I'm going to go back to draw, go back, to, we'll go M, we'll go to three pipes find a little point here to draw him out remember you just go W here we can start moving him around and scaling him as needed let's see Try something here. Okay. Let's 
and sink him back in just a little bit. So he's behind everything. Let me see if this works. Let me do... Let me come off a draw here. Want to... See, we got just him. Okay, let's reverse that mask. And let's do B, S for slice. We're going to do a circle slice. Skip this note. And, and we want that to be square. Oh, crap. I didn't want to slice everything. Let's see, let's see. Not working out the way I wanted. Control Z, Z. I swear it let me do this before. Turn off. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. Let's see. Uh, still sliced everything. Okay. You kind of see what I was trying to do here. Basically, I just want to be able to take that part and then go under geometry and delete it. Where is it? Where is it? Delete hidden. There we go. All right. So I deleted that part now. So that works. Let's go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and okay so it's still mass so we're going to do a clip curve because as you can see the pipes are going way over here well guess what they're going to come shooting way over here I don't want that so I'm going to do so I'm going to clip it right there at the edge so we don't have to worry about that okay same thing with the other side here just got to find the edge maybe have it overhang just a hair should be fine cool so let us take a look at how we're looking so clear the mask Go back to Nanomesh and edit. Oh, I forgot to clear the mask, but that's okay. And we'll zoom out. And we can see that we have a really cool little uh, greeble that we're working on right now. So a half, we're gonna do some quick painting real fast here. Clear the mask, is it cleared? Yeah, it's cleared. Okay, so now as you can see, everybody here is nicely polygrouped. Uh, why don't we add that other gizmo in there real quick? Um, we still got him on here. Let's do M and gizmo. I'm going to drag him out right here first. And I'm going to turn that off for a second. Oops. I didn't want to do that. W, there we go. Get him dead center. Scale him down.
There we go. Boom. And bring them down just a hair. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and clear a mask. And it doesn't look like it actually retains the poly paint. Huh, that's all right. May, hold on. Let me do sub tool. No, we don't want to mess with any of that. Very weird. Okay, so it doesn't actually uh, transfer the poly paint information. So it was like I originally thought. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's frame him up. And let's just do some quick... Uh, painting all right so we're gonna go ahead and change our main color here we'll find like a medium gray we'll go ahead and go to our brush modifiers make sure we're on standard brush RGB is the only thing on and we'll go ahead and increase our draw size there so it works a little better and go to auto masking make sure mask by polygroups is on and let's uh, go ahead, just get a base color down, fill object, okay, change your color, we'll go with dark first, and anything, as you can see, they're all separated by polygroups there, which is kind of awesome. So we'll just go in here and colorize everybody real fast. So maybe we'll make him and make this outer ring. There we go. And how about that guy and that guy. So let's go ahead and change colors. Maybe we'll get a darker. And unfortunately, these guys were not set up. Uh, some of these brushes were not set up with multiple poly groups like some of the most recent ones I added to it. So, sorry about that. So, let's go ahead and pick maybe not purple, just a lighter gray. Let's see, there we go. Add a little variety in there. Maybe down here. All right, okay, so let's go ahead. Now you can, you can go ahead and you do a control shift and then remove that back plate there. And if you go under your nano mesh and now hit edit and come back out and now you'll be able to make a transparent background behind it. So let's zoom out. And we could see our creation there. And cool thing is, everything is nice and tileable in there. How cool is that? So that was just a quick, well, almost quick way of uh, customizing your own Greeble. Uh, let's jump into, let's go ahead and make one more. Let's go over to index here. We'll go over to index one. So we we'll work on a fresh, clean plate here. And we're gonna to go to edit mesh, zoom in, same procedure, a half here. I'm gonna change this back to white, fill object. Now let's load up that uh, rock brush that I told you about, which you can go get for free over at uh, Gumroad. It's called rock IMM 4R8. It's only got like six rocks in here, nothing too fancy. Hit M on your keyboard here. You can see all of them here. And these are just done from photo scan data that I did uh, a couple months ago. So they're just decimated models. Actually, uh, it's actually only three rocks. I just sliced them in half and you get to see both sides. So that's all That's all it is with that. Uh, I'm gonna go under, I'm gonna turn off mass by polygroups for now. I'm gonna go back to uh, let's see we just regular modifiers I'm gonna select one on this multi mesh selector so every time I draw out a rock it goes to the next one then to the next to the next to the next okay so let's go ahead and let's just 
draw something out here. We're gonna, we're gonna kind of leave a little space in the center there. Make like a little cave entrance here. How about that? So we just start drawing it out like I did on the last one. I may make the the opening first here. All right, now it's just time to fill up the space here. And just trying to uh, make sure the only hole I have in here is the hole right here. And I think I should be okay. Let me uh, hide that. Oh, let me clear the mask. Okay, clear it. And that looks good. Let's go ahead, edit mesh, or unedit it in this case. And let's go ahead and zoom out. And there we go. We got our nice little cave entrance. Uh, if it's not exactly where you want it to be, uh, if you want it a little more centered, well, you can still fix that with the nano mesh uh, controls here. You could just mess with the X and Y offset. So we're gonna mess with the Y and we're gonna slowly but surely drag him up. Oop. Let's go back to let's do one. one. Go ahead and do point two five. It's pretty dense because uh, it is trying to work in four K there, so it gets very dense. So we'll do point five. But as you can see, you can manipulate this and still modify it out here in the nanomesh panel. So if you really want to dare to be brave, at least with this high res here, because we've got a lot of polygons that we're messing with here, you can actually tile this. So we're going to go two. I'm going to go too extreme here, guys, but, and then wait for it to capture or catch up there in two. And we should, ah, eh, that didn't really work. Oh, probably because of my size. So let's go ahead and just go back. That's right. I don't think this... Huh. That's interesting. I'll have to monkey with that and figure out why that didn't work. Okay, so don't mess with the tiling for now. 
but you can you can mess with the x and y offsets so we could do like an we'll do a negative 0.5 on the x offset let's see what happens here so let's see 0.6 I want to see all right negative 0.8 See, so you can see it tiles perfectly over here. So, pretty nifty. I'm going to just reset these guys. So you still have control over it, and you can definitely mess with it beyond just the drawing it out and stuff like that. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to cycle back to the other one. And let's go ahead and just touch base super fast on our Greeble Multi. So I'm going to open him up. And we're going to do one super fast. Same, same deal here. So let's go ahead and do Nano Mesh. And we're going to go ahead and Edit Mesh. Turn Polyfill on there real quick. Do A half. And let's see, let's go ahead and load up our Greeble brush again. And let's uh, grab some of these uh, JS or JS placements. Kind of a weird name, but it's a cool little product and I'll definitely show that to you if you're interested in another tutorial. It's basically another Greeble generator that's free and I'll show you how I work with it. So let me grab one of these panels here and I'm just going to drag him out and huh, I didn't I guess I didn't capture it correctly huh weird so I'm going to just drag him out a little bit there we go and I'm going to go ahead and clear the mask drop it there we go now let's go ahead and this guy's been uh, separated with the same sort of process that I did with the other one with that uh, gizmo up there so you can actually go in and color it quite easily so let's go ahead and change our color real fast I gotta quit hitting purple and we're gonna fill object now let's find a darker color here and we should still go back to standard we're on RGB let's oops uh, let's turn on mass by polygroups again and there we go we're just going to do this super fast. Some of them are tied together, but that's all right. That makes it uh, a little more random and awesome. All right, let's grab uh, a light color here. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of going through this real fast. So you can take your time there. So let's go out of Edit Mesh and let's see what it's generating for us. Uh, let's go ahead and let's go zoom back out here. As you can see, everything is randomized. It did not hold on to the color. I guess I didn't set him up correctly. So we'll go to Colorize and go ahead uh, mesh material there we go and that will fix that and let's turn off solo there we go now we can see our or original single there let me go to sub tool and actually turn him on so now we can take advantage of the randomness of that those guys in the background there so we can scale them up And they'll start interacting a little bit based on height with your other. So you can probably offset the Y or the Z. Okay, I got the Z set up to negative. So if you do just zero, it should actually pop it above everything. Or maybe one. Let's see. There it goes. Okay, so you can bring him back down. 
you know, we'll just do 0.5, see where he lands. That's not too bad. So as you scale up, it will actually scale the height up and down there. You could do a random seed, throw them around. You can adjust the distribution. So we could do a 0.1 instead, and that's going to fill up a lot more of the space. Do another random seed. So we can bring that Z offset. We'll actually take it to negative 0.5. Bring him below everything again. There we go. And yeah, so just randomize here. A little randomness uh, adds a lot to everything. So let me take down the distribution to maybe 0.6. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to 0.06. Way too much. So now if you wanted to just do uh, just regular plain tiles, you can actually just uh, reset your color there to white and black. And if you just do UI color, you can see how it just changes to that original color that it came out with. Or you could just do the mesh material, just go back and forth, whichever suits your purpose there. But the nice thing about UI color is there's randomness built into it. So it's got the variations. So you always have a slightly different colored one. It'll come out black sometimes. Sometimes it'll come out white or in between. Or if you just do the mesh color or mesh material instead, and you'll get the original poly paint data with no variations. So, so let's uh, randomize him real fast, and we're going to whip out uh, a quick render and see how this bad boy turned out. So let's go ahead. I'm going to close up modifiers there, brush, close him up. I'm going to open up my texture panel so I can watch this work. We're going to open up my macros for the agreeable generator. And I am going to go ahead and do, now well, why not? We'll just do all maps plus all 3D. And I'm going to get this started. And I will show you the results here in a second. All right, we are all done rendering and uh, executing 3D and stuff like that. So as you can see, maps and models generated. So hit escape there, and let's see what we got. I'm gonna zoom in half-half here. Actually, let's take a look at our uh, textures. Here's our, we don't want that. We want, where is it at? So we got our material ID, we got our normals, curve, AO, diffuse, shaded, depth. So we got everything we need for a nice material set to take into Quixel or Substance Painter or Substance Designer, whatever you want. And we'll go ahead and zoom in half half. And I'm going to go ahead and frame them. And we also have a nice generated 3D model of our displacement that we can decimate down and like I said, it is tileable. So it could tile on either side. Uh, go into my uh, previous video and you can see the ins and outs, uh, the exact process there. It's for the most part a one click oper or it's more of a two click operation. I didn't actually show you that uh, second click in there. You can go into my previous video and see how that works specifically. Uh, but then we also got we also got the cylinder. Load him up there, and hope uh, ZBrush doesn't crash on me, which I think it did. Uh, I think it did crash on me. Oh, it's back, sort of. All right, let me click on him here. There he is. All right. It just had to take a little breather. We all have to do that from time to time. But we can see everything uh, worked out very well. But that is basically it on how to customize your Greeble. 
Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely uh, show me what you're making with it. I want to see all your custom greebles that you're making. I want you to make this your own personal generator that no one else is going to have. So get out there with your Z modeler, make up all these little greeble bits and pieces to use, and you know show it to everybody so thanks again for watching the video uh definitely uh give me a like subscribe and a comment i always appreciate it you guys are the best and we will catch you in the next video you guys have a great day